Hey, welcome back. So I opened this full stack Next.js project that you might be familiar with. If not, just check the full playlist below. In this older version, we do not allow the user to see the typed password. Okay, there's no way for the user to see what was typed inside this input box nor we help the users to pick a better and a safer password. On the newest version that we can see here, we allow all of that by improving our UI. Reminder, this project covers sign up, sign in, log out and routes protection. And on top of that, we will build the new functionalities. As you can see, we have this icon right here. So we can click here to toggle between password and text. So this is one of the new features. The next one is going to be that if this input is not empty, we will display some message. So I'm gonna type something here. I'm gonna type something randomly, okay? As you can see, after I typed one character, we started to see this progress bar that actually changes depending on what's getting typed inside this input box. And we also offer some suggestion to the user. Not only that, we can actually now click this to see whatever I typed. Okay, I'm going to delete this and because there's nothing in the input, all of that is gone. But once I type just one character, I see this again. And I can keep typing and I can do a lot of stuff, whatever. As you can see, I was able to go from a very weak password to a strong password. We display this, that message to the user and we have this colorful progress bar, okay? And this is the password that I just typed, okay? Of course that you do not need to type some crazy long passwords in order to achieve the goal. I was just typing randomly. So I'm gonna now show. So for example, now I'm gonna show and all you have to do in order to achieve a strong password is to combine these characters, okay? So you can actually combine uppercase to lowercase numbers and special characters and that's what's going to create a strong password so i'm going to create an example so alex java at 333 233 whatever see because i'm using lowercase uppercase special characters and numbers i was able to create a strong password with a small length okay so this is what we are trying to do hi I am Alex and you are watching the JavaScript way channel where I teach you some of the modern web development basics just the way I learned them if you find my content helpful make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing so now let's code let's start this by adding the packages that we need for this project i'm gonna actually crash my server and then i'm gonna type npm i and i'm gonna paste the packages that i need And let's wait until this installation finishes. The installation process has finished it and we now can see the new packages here. So it's time to actually to restart the server. npm run dev. Before building this, we of course need to set up our project. And for that, we need to go to our Tailwind config file and Right at the top, I'm actually gonna create a const for next UI. 
So next uh, UI. This is the package that we install it. And I'm going to require this from uh, at next, that's a type already, next uh, UI org react. This should be good. Okay, you need this. And now that you required this, you can actually pass this inside your plugins. All right, so I can grab it, put it right here, and that's it. Right, now you need to go inside the app directory and create a providers.tsx file. So I'm gonna go inside app, create a new file, providers.tsx, and I'm gonna paste this code to be a bit faster. Okay, and that's it. As you probably know, you want the providers to wrap the entire content of your app. That means to wrap the children. So what we want to do is actually to import the providers. So import, and I want to import the providers, okay, from providers, and now, I want to use the providers to wrap the children. And this is good. Okay, with all of the project setup done, it is time for us to move on and to create a custom component inside app. And this custom component will actually display the the bar the colorful colorful bar that you saw in the demo so let's do that so inside the app notice that i do not have um, a components folder normally i have but not in this case so i'm just gonna create this new component inside the app directly and the component name is going to be pass strength and this word is a bit hard for me to type, bar.tsx, okay? And in here, we want to do another import. So I'm gonna copy paste this. As you can tell by now, uh, we are using next uh, UI and we already use that in another import, but I'm not gonna focus on next UI. You can read the documentation on your own. So I'm just gonna import this and I'm gonna do what I have to do. So first I'm gonna have to export a default uh, function. Uh, so I'm gonna say export default function, which I'm gonna call uh, pass strength bar. Okay, and this function is going to return, for now, just a div. That's it. Okay, remember that we are dealing with TypeScript and you can see that by the extension name, which means we're gonna need to create a interface. Interface props. And this is going to represent the strength of the password inputted by the user. So strength, and this can vary, can go from zero up to three. Obviously zero being too weak and three being strong password. So it can be either zero or one or two or three. That's it, okay? Now I can actually bring strength and pass it in here. And of course, TypeScript is going to complain because strength implicitly has an any type. So we have defined the interface, but we are not using it. So to fix the error, we can just pass the props to it. And the error, of course, goes away. So 
now let's uh, just style this div class name I want to use flex and a gap of two that simple inside this div uh, we need to create some logic so array from and this is going to check the length so length and it's going to check the strength in order to display a bigger uh, or smaller bar and different colors and this is an array so we need plus one and from here I can actually map and this means I have access to the index and I need to uh, add the arrow function in here anonymous arrow function and in here I'm gonna have a div and this is complaining yeah because we need to pass the key to the div so this key needs to be um, unique of course every time we look through stuff so we can use actually our index index all good errors gone and the next bit I'm not gonna really explain much uh, so basically we are going to use this CN from next UI and we can use this CN to merge Tailwind CSS classes together conditionally okay I will not explain you that but I will provide you with a couple of links for you to read about it okay so what I'm gonna do actually is to copy uh, the entire class here and I'm gonna paste it right here looks like I messed it up already so let me try this again and now I can actually format my document and things look a bit better right so what do you think the next step will be if you thought like using the recently created component inside the existing sign up page you are correct but as you can see this page already has plenty of code so it's going to be tricky for us to add more code all I'm saying is that I might make mistakes I might get stuck but hopefully things will work just fine so I am going to copy paste some stuff add a few more comments so both you and I know where we are at so I'm gonna start by copy pasting plenty of imports that we need and I'm gonna put them right here okay so you can check this this is not uh, impressive or anything art you should know all of this by now okay now because we are using TypeScript as you know we need to pass the type for the strength so I'm gonna actually right away also copy paste that so we do not forget and we do not get any errors so I'm now looking at the code carefully and I'm looking for the place where I'm gonna paste a few more consts and we already have plenty of them so I think uh, we can actually just remove this console log for now and before the return because it needs to be always somewhere before the return I'm actually gonna copy paste a few costs and then I'm gonna explain them to you briefly okay use state of course because we have not imported use state so we need to import use state 
Okay, another error gone. So we are defining a use state for the password visibility, which is uh, just the icon, the, the strength of the password, the input, and the value of that. You will understand a bit better uh, after we continue doing this. So next, I'm gonna use another use in fact, uh, another use effect to uh, check the strength. And I'm gonna actually just copy paste. I'm not going to spend much time explaining you this because I believe this stuff you can only understand by watching the tutorial and then playing with the code. That's exactly what I did. So if you continue watching this video and if you use the timestamps, you will see a chapter where I show you where I learned this and now I am teaching you how to apply this to a project. So I learned this from another tutorial I apply it to my existing project and now I'm teaching you exactly that. If you're curious, just use the timestamps below and you will see what I mean. So I'm not really explaining much on purpose. I'm just giving you like basic stuff for you to digest and you should be able to uh, do this on your own, just like I did. So just getting the code, Copy pasting the code will make the project work, possibly, potentially, but will not really teach you much. So forget about that. That's just my advice. Okay, so let's continue. Now, uh, we, are in, in, we are importing the input from next UI. So all we have here are standard HTML inputs. So we can just change them by changing, oops, what did I do? Changing this I to a capital I to turn them into a Next.js input. This is the username input. And what do we want to do with it? So we want to change this slightly. So I want to change the classes, the styling a, a little bit. So I'm not gonna spend much time with this, to be honest. So I'm just gonna copy paste stuff. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually to create a div to wrap this input, okay? This input will go inside this div and I can indent this and I can actually copy paste a bunch of classes. Okay. And the input itself also needs to change a few classes. And so I do not make mistake. What I'm going to do actually is to copy paste everything. Okay. And this is the same. We are not going to change any of this. This looks good to me. I think I'm not forgetting anything. So the next input is going to be the email input. And I'm going to do the same thing like I did on the top one, which is to create another div. And I'm going to put that input inside it. Okay. And I just format the document. Cool. Nothing impressive. I haven't changed the classes yet. So just to be 100% sure, I'm going to be pasting this. And now really it's time for us to replace this input with the new input. Okay. And this is going to be tricky, but let's do this. So a div and let's work on this bad boy. Okay. 
this is the password input okay so we need for this one we have on change because that's what we had previously on change on change this is the usual stuff but for this input we need to add uh, on value change so we need to i'm gonna just copy paste this now i better delete this to make sure that i do not mess up so i'm gonna firstly add on value change to this input okay and then i can use the on change like we were using here on change that's the event i'm using the set user to update my variable i grab uh, whatever i spread my user so whatever it's in there and then the password gets updated with whatever it's inputted so this bit did not change okay cool so i'm gonna need my label and now the type is what I want to change. So the type, it can be either text. So when we add the, the icon here, when we click, we see and we toggle by clicking, we toggle and we can, we'll see either the dots like password or the text. Okay. I'm going to add a bunch of classes. And you probably are thinking that I'm adding a lot of code and nothing is happening. And you're right, because we created the component, but we are not yet applying this component. That's why. Okay, I'm trying to go from top to bottom and then we will see the changes and we'll test all of that. Okay. Now we can use the logic here. So we we can use the end content okay that is available to us by using the this input and not the regular input we can use the end content and content okay oh what the heck of course it was not getting suggested because yeah i was inside <laughs> yeah this is what i wanted to do sorry this div I'm gonna, of course, style it right away. Okay, we'll either show one icon or the other, the I the I icon or the I slash icon that we have imported right here from Hero Icons. Okay, so the div will be there. There's always gonna be one icon at a time, and by clicking. The icon will toggle between them so uh, that means of course we need a button okay and this button of course needs the on click event on click I want to set my password what is it uh, set inputted password this one I want to use this function to update my variable. Usual stuff, slightly different syntax, but usual stuff. I want, oh, oh sorry, not this, not, this is not the const that I was looking for. I need to check the set input, um, set password visibility. So this is the, this is the const that will show uh, the password or not. So I need to use this function to update this variable. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, I'm thinking and looking at the screens and talking, so I make mistakes, unfortunately. Now we'll use the prev, prev, and because we are using this, we can use the arrow function and we can negate the prev. And this is what is going to allow us to toggle between one and another. 
So it's one icon or the other, okay? Now that we defined the click event, and that allows us to uh, toggle between one and another, we need to actually pass the icons. And if this is true, I want to do something else. I want to do something else. So I always do this logic like this. I know that I am not going to use the strings, but this is the way that I remember how to write the syntax and I make less mistakes. Okay. And then what I like to do is to put things vertically. So I know exactly where goes what. So this is my own way of coding. Okay. So if this password visibility is true, and we are defining that to false, I believe. Yeah, of course, it's false. So we are not showing the password by default. Okay. Uh, we want to change that. So if this is true, if it goes from false to true, then we want to show this given icon. Okay. Else, we want to show the other icon. And what I want to do actually is to now below this, because remember that we want to show only stuff, uh, only stuff when the user types something inside. If the user has not typed anything yet, we do not display that UI. But if the user types at least one character, we want to show all of that information. Okay, that's what we want to do. Uh, if this is true, what do I want to do? I want to, I mean, yeah, if this is true, I want to show information. Else, I actually do not want to do anything. Therefore, I just leave an empty string in here. So, but if this is true, I'm going to show a div. And this div. And now, if we pass strength. Now we can use this component that we created. Now it's time for us to use the component that we created. And we want to use it inside. Ah, yeah. This is not finished. I need to, of course, to pass the strength. And this is going to be the strength. Where do I have it? The strength bar. Okay. And now I have this for TypeScript. So if I put it here, yeah, the error is gone. Now that the page was re-rendered, as we can see here, we start to see stuff. And we see the icon here that we can toggle, right? And if I type stuff, we start to see the progress bar, not the progress bar, the, the strength bar, okay? And I can actually you cannot really tell, but I can, yeah, I can toggle this. Of course, we need to finish this. And below that, I'm going to add a P below my component. I'm going to add a P, okay? And we are going to check this pass security level. And this is what is going to define the text that is going to change to weak. Okay, see, I art coded. We believe that your password is, this is art coded, but this last bit is actually coming from, I'm gonna show you this. So we are grabbing whatever value we are getting, which, which goes from zero to three, and we are using that to display the text here correspondently. Okay, so this is what we are doing. And below that, I'm actually going to copy paste another p tag. 
and we start to see stuff. But of course that looks like I messed it up. I'm gonna fix this because we have the functionality. We can toggle between password and text that is working and we can type stuff. And if we provide a better password, we get this. So the functionality is all here, but we uh, the, the UI is messed up. So let me just adjust this. Yes, I definitely messed up the code, but now everything seems to be working. So if I now go to my sign up page, uh, we can see that we have the UI that we were expecting to see. And we have the icon for toggling. And if I type something, I start getting this feedback and I can toggle between text and password. So now really is the time to see if everything is actually working. So we are going to take the chance to actually signing up another user. So strong pass to the email is going to be strong pass to at gmail.com. I'm going to actually going to open the console here. So you see this and the password is going to be strong pass oops I'm not typing anything strong we can now see what we are typing strong pass uh, at 232 whatever so as you can see we the ui is working let's go ahead and register a new account as you can see inside our console, we are getting that feedback. So definitely we created a new user, so we can use these credentials to log in the user. So I do not need the username, I actually need the email. And looks like I added this email, doesn't matter. And this is the password and I should be able to log in and be redirected to the profile page. And this is good. So that means there's a cookie in the browser. I can, because I'm logged in, let me see the routes. Because I'm logged in, I'm not supposed to access the login page. And of course, this is a 404 because I used um, caps lock. So let's try one more time with lowercase. And I cannot access the login page because I am already logged in. So this is good. And I should not be able to access the sign up page because I am already logged in. This is good. So I can now log out. And if I'm logged out, I should not be able to access the profile page because I am logged out and I cannot. So finally, this is done. So check the next part of the video because I will kind of let you know something. Okay, time for the last part of this video where I'm going to give some credits to someone else and to give you a little bit of advice for you to keep improving your coding skills. So if you watch this tutorial, you probably thinking, especially looking at the last file, the last page that we worked on, you probably thinking like, gosh, that's like too complex and all of that, blah, blah, blah. And yes, it is a bit complex, but guess what? Uh, when I come to YouTube to teach you stuff, uh, at the end of the day, I, of course, like pretty much any other YouTuber, I prepare things in advance, which means I write the code, I review the code, I make my own notes, I test the code, blah, 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 and so on. So my point here is this tutorial was only able after watching some other tutorials. And actually, for me to build this that you see here, 
it took me two, three, or four teachers, to be honest, okay? And I wanna talk to you about and show you the last tutorial that I watched in order to apply this new feature that we actually built together and how this helped me. So this is the tutorial that I watched. I never saw any of these guys' tutorials before, I believe. So this video was suggested to me by YouTube and I came across uh, this by accident, I guess. Uh, but this is the video that I watched in order to be able to learn this knowledge and implement it in my project. So if you watch the video and you can and should watch this video, you will notice that um, I believe this guy doesn't even provide the source code for this project, okay? I might be wrong, I might be right, I'm not really sure, but my point is, I coded along everything. I read uh, a little bit of the documentation, I coded along, and then I figured it out how to apply that into my existing project. And this is what you actually should do. You should learn from some other uh, sources, one, two, three, four, whatever. And you should not just watch to the tutorial. You should try to implement fe features. You should play with the code. You should break the code. And as you saw, I was teaching you this and I broke the code and I needed to fix it. There's plenty of ways of doing it, whatever, but at the end of the day, now it's fully working and that's my point, okay? So what I'm saying is I honestly and personally believe that like at least 80% of the YouTubers do not really create stuff. Yeah, this affirmation is strong. I believe like 80% of the YouTubers recreate stuff and I am included in those 80%. So I learned from several teachers and I recreate stuff. I add stuff, I remove stuff, I redo stuff. I cannot really figure out this alone uh, on my own, just by looking at the docs alone. I can't, I cannot really, really learn uh, all of this like that. So for me, I always not like find a nice tutorial, a watch to the tutorial, and then code along, and then play with the code, and then create my own project, or uh, change an existing one like I did here. So this is my process. I watch to a tutorial, then I, I code everything myself, then I play with the code, and then I recreate, update, delete, add stuff. So my point here is, you should not just watch the tutorials. You should do things also. Otherwise, things will break for obvious things sometimes and you will not understand why. And I give you one example that happened to me in the past. Uh, just going to the GitHub and downloading the zip folder and stuff, things were not working because there was no .env file and there was no uh, MongoDB connection string. Therefore, I couldn't do anything with that code in that project. So that is, a, that is very frustrating. My point is you need to play with the code in order to see what fits where. Because sometimes a small typo or something that is missing can actually break your entire application. So having said that, one more time, I'm gonna give credits to this guy because by watching this 15 minutes tutorial, I was able to create this very, very long tutorial for you. And yeah, I'm kind of laughing because that's not really good, but that's the reality. Uh, but yeah, I was able to apply my recently gained knowledge. And that's what I think you should do. Okay, so to wrap all of this up, if you think my channel brings up value to you. Do not forget to 
subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, give me a like, and of course, share this content with other people that you think that might be interested in, lear in learning this modern web development stuff. So thanks for watching, thanks for the support, and I will see you on the next video. Bye!